All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of Afterlife Apologetics with both myself and Dr. Miller. Good old friend Steve here. One of the major things that we're going to talk about today is we have two questions. We're going to address the first question, which I'll show you guys here on the screen in a moment, and then we'll address the second question later on in the episode for today. But our main goal today, and we've mentioned this to you guys in the past, that if we get questions, we really want to prioritize those questions so that you guys can have a good resource to come to, like a video that's directly aimed at answering those questions and not just answering them uh, as we pass by. So it's really important to make it easy for you guys to get to these answers as well as for us to be able to really dialogue on that particular point and give you guys a lot of really good information because that's our heart in doing this for you guys is that we want you to have a comprehensive resource not just a hey say this to them but give you a really full scope of the landscape and the understanding of the question and some of the surrounding context of it so that you can be better aimed at both understanding it as well as answering the question or the objection when it comes up okay i'm going to bring up our first question here so this comes from shauna and or Shane, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. But uh, what she said was, thanks for taking the time to have these discussions. Something that I'm having a hard time with is that in all of the NDEs I've listened to, whenever God, Jesus, or another spiritual being was asked what the right religion was, they say something unclear like, whichever brings you closer to God. I have yet to see a case where the experiencer is pointed to Christianity. Any thoughts as to why that is? If God wants all to be saved and know the truth revealed about him in the Bible, why not point people to read his word and find the truth there? What an excellent question that we got from Shana. And turns out we've got just the man for the plan to answer this question. Name Steve, and here he is. He's got a cape on. You guys can't see it, but he's going to rock and roll with us today, right? So Steve, how would you begin responding to this question? And then we'll go from there. Sure. Well, I appreciate the question. And it, and it brings up the deeper question of what do we do with anomalous near-death experiences? Now, I've seen one near-death experience that said almost the exact words that Shauna said, which where they asked God or Jesus or whoever, you know, which religion should I follow? And they said, you know, just whichever one brings you closer to God. In other words, it doesn't really matter which religion you're a part of. Uh, number one, that sounds a little bit strange to me in general, because, I mean, there are some really wild religious groups out there, cults. There are many dangerous religions out there. And I can't imagine, frankly, God saying, hey, just Go to whichever one you want. You know, if you're going to get involved with a cult and it brings you closer to God, go for it because our beliefs really matter. So there's something a little bit strange about it. Now, to me, I've looked at hundreds, yay, thousands probably of near-death and deathbed experiences. That's the only one I recall out of all those that said anything about all religions being okay. I think this just brings up a wonderful discussion, and I really appreciate this being brought up. In my classes, I have an argument diagnosis chart where whenever you hear a claim from someone, the first thing you say is, how interesting. I wonder if it's true. Now, what that does is that knocks your critical thinking in gear to say, okay, I don't just believe everything I hear. The Bible and Proverbs says, the fool believes everything he hears. So I don't believe every experience I hear. In fact, when you're looking at the NDERF site, N-D-E-R-F, which has collected well over 5,000 experiences now, when I was searching that for something specific that I wanted to see in a uh, sequence of submitted experiences, I had to look at a, over 140 of them to get 140 that I thought were really near-death experiences. Now, I wasn't just calling out things that I didn't like. Someone would say, well, I was walking down the road and I had this vision. Well, why does Dr. Long let that experience get up there if it's about near-death experiences? Because he doesn't want to be accused, he and his wife don't want to be accused of selecting the experiences they like. So they let people put anything up there. Yeah. Some are just the visionary experiences. Some, you get to reading the experience and they'll say, oh, well, you know, I, I do take medication for schizophrenia, but here are the five top experiences that I've had. And I'm saying... I've got reason to question what that person's saying because they're hearing from God all the time, right? So, Steve, so, really quickly, let's give context on that. So the Near-Death Experience Research Foundation, correct? That's the NDERF? Mm -hmm. So that's run by Dr. Long, 
and he is a famous near-death experience researcher with an MD background. So he created that website as a means by which to collect these testimonies because he found that people were much more comfortable submitting their testimonies in written form than saying being interviewed. Because a lot of people, when they are asked about these experiences, are shy. They're worried about how they're going to be judged or perceived by others for those exact reasons. Some people who have them are very forward about having them. And like Steve's saying, you would have good reason to not believe them because they would say things like, I have this mental disability or disorder or a psychological disorder, something to that effect. I'm taking a medication for that. So those are reasons why you would may not necessarily consider that person's testimony reliable, just like in a court case. But there are people who have a lot at stake if people see them as crazy because they may be very successful business people or doctors or whatever, they have a public persona to maintain. So the anonymity that's provided by Dr. Long's website is a very comfortable format for them to vent and talk about this experience for themselves and let others read it and collect the data from it in, in a way where they don't have to worry about uh, repercussions. I um, interviewed one person who had seemingly a legitimate first experience, a near-death experience, but the more you talk to the person, you start sharing about subsequent experiences that get wilder and wilder and wilder. And then the more I talked with the person, the person said, oh, by the way, I'm on medication that I'm supposed to be taking for schizophrenia. Mm. And I thought, OK, I, I don't think I'm supposed to believe it, trust everything this guy says because of that. Yet over and over, people have interviewed this person not knowing the psychological history. So we have to be careful for these. Let me just list some red flags that come up. The reason we can't take everything we hear, because it is not a part of the core experience that people come out saying, when I was on the other side, God told me that all religions are equal or fine. That is not a part of the core experience. So why am I very loath to accept something I hear if it's not a core part of the core? Yeah. Number one, there's mental illness, which we talked about. Number two, there's fraud out there. Some people that'll go on the Endurf site or others, uh, other places and talk about, they're trying to sell their book about their experience hmm. and they have reasons, monetary reasons for making it a little more exciting. If it's just a normal core experience, why would anybody buy it? They want to buy it because there's something specific that others are not talking about. And they may be targeting a specific like Mormons or they're targeting uh, new age people mm -hmm. and they have awesome. reasons, financial reasons to beef it up a little bit. Case in point, malarkeys. I can't believe they had that name, mal malarkey. But uh, their book ended up being just fraudulent. It was made up. And finally, the son admitted it and it was taken off the press. But I think her real question is, why don't we see a lot of people with seeing Jesus on the other side? And he says, listen, here's what you need to do to be saved. You need to understand that you've got a problem with sin. We need a solution to that sin problem. I died for you so that you could have salvation. Here's what you need to do. Repent and believe on Jesus. Why don't we hear the specifics of salvation or at the very least saying, hey, uh, get involved in a good, strong Bible-believing Christian church as opposed to a cult or another religion that may be teaching something different. Why don't we see it that specific? And, and my response to that would be that the spreading of the gospel in the Bible was left for his followers to pass on. Matthew 28, 18 through 20, you shall be my witnesses. Go to the uttermost parts of the earth, okay? Make disciples of all nations. If they want to cherry pick these experiences, they can essentially get experiences to say whatever they want. And to be fair, you can do the exact same thing with the Bible, as we've seen so many times done in culture. If you take the Bible and you start cherry picking verses out of it, you can get it to say all types of things. Many would agree that it does not say. I think there's this common conception that anyone who goes in and looks at near-death experiences and, and comes to the conclusion that these are these are real experiences happening, the afterlife hypothesis is true, and that these people are really encountering something on the other side, right? We don't take all the near-death experiences super seriously. What Steve and I do is we look at them as a whole, and then we say, okay, what data, and he's referring to the core experience. So, and this is common. You see this in Moody's work. You see this in Kenneth Ring's work and a few other works where they say, look, based off of all the data, this is kind of the 
atypical experience that we're going to see occur. And so we start to look for experiences to fit into this pattern because this is the pattern we've seen emerge and it's the most consistent pattern. Yeah, I think that's, a, that's very well put. And I would just say, uh, according to God's word, if you're a Christian, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 talks about examine everything carefully. It's in the context of don't quench the spirit, don't despise prophetic utterances, but examine everything carefully. Hold fast to what? To that which is good. So I do hear a lot of people saying things be beyond what our listener had said. Some will say, oh, all religions are fine. They're really all the same. Well, I, I teach world religions and I know that they're diametrically opposed to each other on, on many issues. I mean, uh, according according to Christians, Jesus had, had the last and greatest word as to, to how to get saved, the New Testament writings, that's, and we're not supposed to add to those. Uh, well, then the Muslims come along and say, no, 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 we've got another revelation now that supersedes that and is mm -hmm. different in many mm -hmm. ways they're saying it's corrupted okay we well, can't believe that both the new testament is an accurate uh revelation for us about god and then believe the muslim picture that the new testament is corrupted and then you can't also believe that oh and there was another revelation the book of mormon which was given now either we are given a new revelation or we're not but but you can't believe that they're all just as good. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? If you want to search for them, you can find many people saying, I went to the other side. God loves me. There is no judgment. He's just a good God. He doesn't care anything. And you're saying, okay, is that exactly what he said to you on the other side, that it doesn't matter what you believe? Or is that your conclusion at the end? Mm -hmm. Because when you get to anomalous ex near-death experiences, they do contradict each other. One person will say, I found out that all I learned in church, that was just all a bunch of baloney. Now, maybe they went to a sorry church. Maybe they went to a very judgmental church that didn't preach grace or was unbalanced in its teaching. And yeah, I understand that it it sounds different. God really loves you and cares for you. I believe that it's biblical that God loves you that much. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. Well, I think that uh, we've got, we've gone well over our time today. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for showing up for today's episode. I hope uh, our, our listeners who, who submitted those questions feel that uh, we have properly given some, some great answers around it. If not, like Steve said, of course, comment in the comment section below. Um, hoping that we got the technical issues fixed today, guys. So the audio should have been a lot cleaner uh, in terms of being able to hear Steve and I both equally. So uh, if not, we will get it resolved. I promise you guys we'll get it resolved if, if it was not resolved. Today. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks so much for the questions. Yeah, that's the way we learn that is a part of the essence of science is observations and questions. And anybody can ask a good question. You don't have to be an expert. So chime in. That's what makes it interesting. Awesome. Okay, cool. Well, uh, we had a great time today, guys, and I uh, hope you did too. But uh, God bless. We'll see you guys in the next episode where we talk.